Mikaela Fox, community manager for Darkflow Studios and an official Enlisted developer, was given questions about the future of Enlisted that you guys asked him over on my Discord server. There was a huge number of questions submitted, but with the aid of the official Enlisted helpers, 20 of them were chosen for him to answer, and his replies are in this video. There'll also be timestamps, so you can skip to the questions you are most interested in. But all the answers are juicy. Trust me. Let's get stuck in with question number one, which is about something that everybody is curious about, especially given the past modern conflict, limited time event, and all the modern weapons that people use to create gun game mods. Do the developers ever plan to head into modern combat campaigns or themes? Here's Chaos Fox's answer. There are no such plans for Enlisted in the near future. Right now, we want to compete the major redesign of the game. It's a very time-consuming and difficult process that won't end even after the new progression system is released. That being said, though, he still says that more and more exciting content from the later stages of World War II will appear in the game. We haven't even mentioned the many interesting campaigns you can expect. Now, whilst some may be disappointed to hear modern conflict is not on their minds right now, the latter part confirms there's going to be a huge range of new campaigns added to Enlisted in the near future, as well as lots of really cool unique weapons from the late war. So the developers are definitely thinking ahead for the long-term future of the game, which is super Super promising. Question number two is from Senorwil and says, with the full release on the horizon, as well as the new tech tree merge, will the long awaited weapon modification and veteran soldiers finally be available to research? For those of you unfamiliar with what he's referring to, it's the part in the upgrades menu which has forever remained a mystery to most players, indicating that more perks were planned to be added in the future. However, KO Fox's answer is this. Considering the scale of the progression redesign, we put the idea of introducing them into the game on hold, but we may come back to it in the future. So in short, it's not forgotten, but it's on hold for a bit longer. Question 3 is from Night Angel and asks, are there any plans to increase the squad size or allow us to queue up with or against others? Now obviously you can only queue up with your friends in a maximum 4 stack right now, but if you join our Discord server you can find many more than that to play with, and even over in my Twitch streams we can get absolutely stacked 10v10 queue snipes sometimes. And if you want to watch these high level chaotic matches then you definitely need to head over there. But interestingly enough, KO Fox's response is about the reverse. He says, we will definitely not increase it because the community asked us the opposite, less player groups in battles. I mean, he's not wrong. Just think about how many games are decided purely by one top tier four stack. But he goes on to say, maybe we'll consider changing the priorities of the new matchmaking, groups on groups, if it doesn't hurt the queue times, which I think personally is a very good idea, especially for counteracting the top tier four stacks. But perhaps more importantly to recognize is that when the merge comes in, a four stack won't be much better than any random team of players, especially in the games based on late war gear. There are more than enough good players in the game that when the campaign merge comes in, many games will be super close and hard fought anyway, no matter if four stacks are unchanged. And besides, you can always just try and queue up at the same time, with a chance of still getting in the game with more than three of your friends. Question four is by Uglug. Are there plans to implement customization of weapons? For example, adding your own preferred scopes or bayonets to weapons, or switching out the magazine. And the answer. We're certainly going to make special events with uniquely designed weapons, but there are no plans to implement customization in the near future in Enlisted. Now hold your horses. This might sound disappointing, but then he goes on to explain why. We have a historical game. Unfortunately, during World War II, the weapons were not diverse enough in real life, so there's no weapon customization in the game. We introduce all the interesting looking, rare historical variants in events and battle passes as individual items. No doubt have you guys seen many variants already from events, like the recent paratroopers Super FG-42, but with a grenade launcher, or if we go really far back, the silenced MP-40 Peacock Squad with the boy Sigmund Harder. But this will be the extent of customization in Enlisted, at least for now, and we can't really complain due to the reasons provided. Instead, all the new different types of weapons together will create the variety, and as one of the previous questions showed, many more are coming. Slenko asks question 5. Is there going to be a choice to choose the bombs and shells of a plane slash tank? Now here, I probably would have said in my script that I've seen lots of people ask about this, but luckily for you, the Fox already mentions this. We noticed the request for this option and will consider it. However, it has a number of difficulties. In the new Enlisted, vehicles will have a battle rating, which would have to change along with the change in armaments. Very promising. So whilst there may not be much gun customization, vehicle and aircraft customization is something that they will explore. And if you put all the rockets and bombs you can carry on a P-47, you will rightly get into a high battle rating game. Question 6 is by Bean Wars, which was 
also similarly asked to buy Atari and Kinder. Will chat and friend systems be improved? Such as squad chat, knowing if a friend is in game or just AFK at lobby, or chatting with the enemy team in a game. This is something I personally have desired for the game to change. And the developers also agree. Squad chat and improved status display are added to our plans. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's coming. But chats with enemies? doubt it. It never led to anything good. Slightly disappointing, but once again, they are right. When was the last time having global chat in any other game ever led to something other than blatant racism, insults, and the list goes on? Bean Wars also added a second part to his question, which we'll call question 7, as the developers chose to answer it separately. Also, can there be an option where we can auto-log in instead of pressing log in every time the loading screen? And the reply is short and sweet. We have plans for such a feature. A small, helpful quality of life change like this will never go amiss for players. Rachel asks question 8 about the replay mod, an aspect of the game that could be a massive selling point to support up and coming content creators as well as to improve players' own gameplay by reviewing their own VODs. Are there plans to improve the replay mode? Namely, to add a function to go back in time while watching the replay to record the same scene from different camera angles. It would help in creating cinematic videos. Many of you will recall that rewinding the replay mod was a feature requested by you guys and added in the latest updates, which you can learn more about in this video. But their short response still shows they will continuously make replay modes better and better. Yes, on a regular basis. In the latest major update, we fixed a lot of bugs and added the option to rewind replays, as you asked. And now it's time for the question that's after my own heart. The thing I've been patiently hoping for since basically the dawn of mankind. And I'm 100% sure I asked for this feature before everybody else realized how amazing it would be for tournaments allowing us to cast, commentate, and analyze them. Asked by Imperial Wyvern this time as question nine, but also the Badangineer Fazda asked this, do the devs plan on making a live spectator mode for custom games? Sadly though, this answer isn't as promising as I might have liked. Not at the moment, because we think that this kind of functionality is only needed when there are tournaments. When the tournaments appear in the game, we will make this functionality. That being said, I completely agree. It would be needed for tournaments, but it doesn't really have any use until there are official tournaments announced. Question 10, we're already halfway, and here's Benathor's inquiry. Will there be some way to take more premium squads into battle since many people will have more of these squads than they can even use after the merge, especially for Germany? Lots have wondered about this, as due to the campaign merge there will be significantly fewer slots that would have to be shared by standard squads and premium squads. But as per the most recent dev blog, we recently decided that premium squad owners will be able to count on an extra slot, specifically for premium squads. This will allow them to take their favourites into battle, even if all slots are filled with their regular army lineup. Although this feature is in the world, Works, we're not sure if we'll have time to introduce it directly with the major updates. It may appear later. Hopefully they can add this in time, as it would be very helpful. When are there going to be tournaments? A well-designed tournament structure will lead to a large social media promotion and growth for the game, says Paradivision, fellow content creator for Enlisted, as question 11. And I agree with him a lot here. The first organised Enlisted tournaments garnered much interest, and you can watch the documentary of the winning team in this video. And the devs' response is thus. In the short term, we're busy with the major updates. As long as we're not done balancing what is essentially a new game, it's too risky to make large-scale tournaments. For now, we plan to do small competitive events. Stay tuned. In other words, this means not yet, but something they want to explore more in the future once they feel the gameplay is better balanced. And focusing on public gameplay is much more important, after all. But something like the even fight past events may be revisited, if that is what they mean by small competitive tournaments. In my lucky number of question 12, Pixel25, a very well-known enlisted mod and map maker, you've likely played some of his mods, such as some modern gun games, asks, when do you plan on expanding the mod editor's capabilities? The reply for this, though, is actually really impressive from the developers. We have already collected a lot of feedback from the authors and are working on it. You may have seen the first results in the recent major updates. And next month, meaning July, as in this month, we will start communicating with the author community even more actively. We will be collecting feedback and problems with the editor, and hope that you will tell us what kinds of improvements you would like to see. And in addition to all of this amazing stuff, they give a specific thank you to him for his help on creating the ability for custom hangers and backgrounds for the game, which is really wholesome. And you can find out how to add one of those for yourself for your own game in this video. 13. Maybe an unlucky number for many, but not for Teapom, as he asks whether there are any plans to link enlisted with the Gaijin marketplace and make event squads slash weapons able to be traded there. The response is very positive. In the long term, 
term, we'd like to integrate the market into Enlisted. In the future, we want to make events more convenient and introduce content suitable for trading. We believe this will enable more players to access premium content just by playing the game. I won't lie, I wasn't expecting this answer from the developers at all, but wow. If it allows players to just play the game and earn premium paid content, but for free, that is something that will do wonders for the game. Just look at War Thunder. I'm very impressed. Perhaps 13 is actually a lucky number now. 14 sees Kitsune Lord 91 ask about the most crucial class in the game being added to very old paid squads, where they aren't already added. Will the old premium squads get their engineer slot added? In the responses sheet, the developers also made their reply to this question answer whether event squads will be treated the same, such as the very old PPK 42 squad, which the Badangineer also mentioned. We see how popular this request is and will consider adding engineers to old premium squads. It probably will not be all squads, and the preparation itself may take time. Now this is great to know they'll be considering it, especially after how many times myself and so many other players on the forums, Reddit, etc. have all mentioned it. Yet I feel it probably should be all squads, rather than just a few, unless they have plans to nerf engineer built spawns and rally points in some way or other, as adding engineers to them would completely change the intrinsic value of these premium squads. Rally points are just too crucial to the outcomes of games for it to ever be worth it not to have one. And if you need more information on why this is the case, watch this video on how to improve at Enlisted. Question 15. Well, it's actually two questions, but KFox answered them together, so we're going to treat them as two for the price of one. Great deal! Firstly, NS wonders whether there is any plan to improve the current animations in the game. One of the main criticisms of Enlisted from people who don't play it is due to this, so it makes sense people would want to understand what the plan is surrounding it. Back when we announced the roadmap, we also told you about the work on the animation improvements. This promise is not forgotten. The work is in progress and we will present the results in the future. I mean, if you basically look at every update, they're always improving the animations. So they are doing what they said they were going to do and they will keep doing it, but perhaps now as larger groups of changes. The second question within question 15, I know it's a bit confusing, but stay with me here, was by Syria. Do you plan to add movement inertia and make leaning a bit slower slash more realistic? We don't see leaning as a problem at the moment and don't see the community actively discussing it, but we are always open to a constructive dialogue about it. He's right. I used to not be a fan of leaning at all, thinking it looked stupid, was annoying, etc. But once you remember that the game is basically becoming more arcadey, leaning and how it works in the game right now is actually very good to add a little skill element to the game. It could be adjusted slightly, of course, to make it not ridiculously OP. So of course, let the developers know in the comments of this video what you think. Let's create that constructive dialogue that they are looking for. Atari also asks, in his lengthy question earlier about social functions for the game, about referral programs as an incentive to bring friends to enlisted, which KFox has decided to answer in its own separate question. Question 16. In our experience, such systems do not work well enough and they are often used by misbehaving players who create additional accounts. That's why we don't have any such plans at the moment. It makes sense. There will always be people on the internet who will take advantage of any offer. If you have any idea of what they could do that wouldn't incentivize abuse, then post it in the comments. The developers are always being forwarded the most popular and upvoted feedback from my video comment sections. In 17th, we have a topic many of you will be interested in knowing the answer to. It's on everyone's lips at the moment, but Stefan puts it simply. Are there plans to add paratroopers to all factions after the merge? In short, they answer, so far, there are no such plans. But we can introduce more squads with events and as premium squads. I would assume that this therefore means no Soviet paratroopers are planned right now, but could be added in the future. And if they change their minds, the new tech tree system will allow them to slot paratroopers in easily. And it's still really good that they're continuously giving new events to earn free paratroopers then. Now some players are vehicle lovers, and that makes sense considering Gaijin also makes War Thunder. Mayfi asks for question 18 whether there is any plan to add a vehicle squad for free to play players. He then goes on to say, the game is essentially pay to win free, with the sole exception of free to play having to pick between planes and ground vehicles, which leads to a situation where they cannot compete. Now I personally would disagree and say having only one tank or plane squad is more than enough to compete. But instead of me, I'll let the devs answer. Not planned. We want to keep the game's infantry vehicle balance, and since most players have three infantry slots and only one vehicle slot, this guarantees that balance. Remember that the game is infantry focused. You need to be on the ground as infantry to capture or defend objective points, which in turn would have made a lack of infantry squads pay to win, not a lack of P-47 variants. Aircraft and tanks are just bonuses to create more variety and fun and add new elements to the game. 
so it makes perfect sense. And if you want to use more vehicles anyway, you can just buy extra slots which are quite cheap. So the option is always there. The Red Storm Tornado Boss asks question 19 about other objectives in battles. Do the developers want to implement more side objectives in addition to the main objective points? One somewhat example of this are the Barrage Balloons in Normandy Airfield map, where if you destroy them, the attacking team gets extra tickets. And he also provides a few other examples which you can see on screen now. Chaofox likes this idea a lot. Such tasks are really interesting. We even have a list of ideas ourselves, but it's hard to achieve a satisfying balance for both sides. And because of this, so far we do not plan on introducing new features to missions yet. Not yet probably refers to being busy with the game-changing improvements of the game coming soon, once again. And hence they're trying to balance gameplay and everything else together before they consider this. But we can say they do want to add these, so keep suggesting ideas. And lastly, the final chosen question to be answered by Forlorn Squad, developer of the famous 1v1 mod for Enlisted, but you can watch some gameplay of it in this video. He asks if there are any plans to make some changes to Gold Order Soldiers. For example, giving the oldest Gold Order Soldiers max stats, or giving the soldiers some extra cool features. Personally, I think this is a must. They should go all out and make these special hero soldiers worthwhile to buy, invest time in, and form an attachment to. But Chaofox has a different idea to make them special. He says, all new unique soldiers for Gold Orders from Season 6 onwards already have maximum stats. If you are unsure what this means, you can check official Enlisted Helpers Euthemia's public Enlisted resource to see which soldiers are from which Battle Pass season. A link to it is in the description. But here's the key part of the answer. Although we still want to make unique soldiers even more interesting, and are considering giving them a small experience boost. An XP boost is not something I expected them to say, but it's actually a very good idea to help you reduce your grind. I'm unsure whether they mean as an XP booster for normal campaign levels, for the squad it's in, or just for the soldier himself to obtain perks quicker, but time will tell. Speaking of Gold Order Soldiers, you should now watch this short on who the special Gold Order Soldiers were in real life, or this video if you want to see the previous developer Q&A about the massive updates coming soon. Comment down below what you think of the responses, and as said before, the devs are being forwarded the most upvoted comments. And like the video if you found this interesting, as it will incentivize them to do more Q&As that you guys as players want to see.